Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Councilmember Corey Johnson, Chair of the New York City Council's Committee on Health. Today, the committee will be voting on a bill related to keeping exotic and wild animals out of circuses and a bill to increase transparency in the school food inspection system. Propos uh, proposed introduction number 1233A would prohibit the use of a variety of exotic and wild animals in circuses keeping exotic animals in captivity, transporting them around the country, and requiring them to perform, to perform tricks night after night for human amusement is, in my view, inherently inhumane. I believe it is time for New York City to join the growing number of municipalities around the country that have protected exotic animals from this unnatural and often abusive environment. I am excited to co-sponsor this legislation with Councilmember Rosie Mendez, and I would like to thank her for introducing this important piece of legislation. This has been a labor of love. She's been doing this for many years, and she's going to make uh, some comments in a few minutes. We're also voting on proposed introduction number 1263A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, to require school cafeteria health inspection results to be posted online. School cafeterias are inspected by the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, just like restaurants are, and parents should be able to access the results of these inspections to feel confident that the food in their children's school is safe. Uh, I want to thank Councilmember Drum for his leadership on introducing this bill that will increase transparency in the inspection system that is currently obscured from public eye. And I want to say this is a city issue. It's not a state issue. This is a city issue. This has to do with the local Department of Education. The state can continue to try to take away bills from us, but I am glad that we heard this bill a long time ago. You brought this to the council long before it was even discussed in the state legislature, and I'm glad that we're passing this today before Albany can try to pass something on us. Um, I want to thank uh, the former committee council, uh, though he's here today because he worked so hard on this, uh, David Seitzer, who's worked a long time on the uh, circus bill. I also want to thank my Deputy Chief of Staff, uh, Louis Cholden Brown, and I want to thank uh, Rosie Mendez's uh, amazing John Blasco for his work on this as well. And lastly, I want to thank the advocates, because this is an issue uh, that uh, can be difficult in many ways. And uh, John Phillips has worked so hard on this for so long. He has been here every single day. And the new organization that he and Allie uh, have put together uh, just have put an enormous amount of time and energy on this. I'm really grateful for their leadership as well as Joyce uh, for her help on this as well. So uh, with that, I want to turn it over to Councilmember Rosie Mendez first, followed by Councilmember Daniel Drum. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for all your work on helping me get this bill to the finish line. I introduced this bill originally in April of 2006 and have reintroduced it twice since. And during the years, the bill has changed in forms and in categories, sometimes adding groups and deleting groups. But after the, the October hearing, I listened very closely to the testimony. We took into consideration a lot of what was being said by the public, and we made some additional changes to this bill. I want to thank, thank David Seitzer for all of his work on this uh, piece of legislation. And through the years, all of my different staff members, Lisa Kaplan, um, uh, Jasmine Torres, um, wow, there's a two, two people I'm forgetting in between there who worked on this as well. And, um, and of course now John Blasco who has helped me get this here today. Uh, lastly, I wanna thank John Phillips. Um, in the interest of disclosure, he happens to be coincidentally my constituent, but he's been my friend for a long, long time, and this is something we discussed before I got elected. And thank you, thank you for trusting me to carry this bill. Um, 11 years in coming, but we're finally gonna make this a reality. Thank you so much, John. And thank you to the chair and to the committee. 
Uh, thank you, Councilor Mendez. I forgot to mention that uh, yesterday the Wildlife Conservation Society, which uh, helps run the zoos in New York City and Central Park and the Bronx and other places, put together a memorandum of support uh, of this piece of legislation. I want to turn it over to Councilmember Daniel Drum. Hold on one second. I just remembered Janos Martin and Christopher Labarge, my other two legislative directors who worked on this. Thank you very much. You have great staff. Daniel Drum. Thank you very much. That's very important, uh, Councilmember Mendez. And thank you, Chair Johnson, for holding, this initial, for holding the initial hearing and now this vote. Also want to thank Alexis Wasenberg and Committee Council David Seitzer for their work on Intro 1263A. I view our efforts as ensuring transparency in a vitally important area of health. Students and their families are entitled to know the results of health safety inspections when they eat out at restaurants and now food carts. It is only right that this information be available for the city's largest prepared food provider, our schools. My hope for this legislation is twofold. First, I hope the sunshine will encourage better practices in school kitchens. Publicly accessible information has certainly seemed to have this effect on other food service establishments. Second, healthy habits start young, and I hope that this measure will be viewed as part of a broader push around health education and awareness in our schools. I was very happy to work with the advocates from early on to initiate the public dialogue in New York City on school cafeteria health inspection reporting. As always, thanks to Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for making sure the Council continues to take the lead on this and other food-related issues. I encourage the members of the Health Committee to vote yes on this introduction, 1263A. And again, thank you, Chair Johnson. Uh, thank you, Danny. With that, I, uh, I believe that there are, there's a member of the, who's not of the committee who wanted to make a comment, so I want to call on uh, my colleague, uh, Council Member Andy King. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the time and effort to come and address the committee prior to today's vote. Um, I do have uh, some concerns, and I wanted to just have it placed on the record with the hopes that the board takes in, uh, this committee takes in consideration what I'm about to share. Um, I first want to um, ask us all here are sitting on the committee, or even those in, out sitting out here, how many of us have been to a circus growing up? I know I have. By a show of how many of us have been to a circus growing up? And I think um, us going to have an opportunity to go to a circus as a child um, exposed us to elements of animals that we may have never ever get an opportunity to see. I know personally I'll probably never get to Serengeti to ever see an elephant or a lion running around. Um, and I'm pretty sure many of us probably won't either. And I think that to deny a generation of children the opportunity of the experiences that we witness as children, I think is not fair to them, it's not fair to our generations um, that are coming up. I also believe that while we might believe that animals are being treated misfairly, I would like to subscribe that if the city believes that then there should be some rules that people apply by whether they're circuses or they move animals in and out um, that they must apply by. But to say that they should be extinct is almost like every adult um, who might have mistreated a child, do we get rid of our children because they were mistreated by adults? I don't know of animals in the circus um, who have been mistreated or been abused. Um, and if that was the case, then there would be a long list of abuse cases that we can always, that we can refer to. I'm saddened to hear um, that, you know, Ringling Brothers went out of business, the Big Apple has gone out of business, and the last circus that allows us to bring some entertainment to our communities is now being forced out of the city of New York by this particular legislation. I don't know where does it end. You know, is it next to Bronx Zoo? Because if you want to talk about cruelty to animals, you know, I'm surprised by the Bronx Zoo due to the fact that you take an animal out of its natural habitat and you put it in jail and tell, it, tell the world that it's okay and say it's for educational purposes. Because that's what you've done when you put a lion and put him behind a cage and all he has to do is roam from 10 feet to 10 feet and that's, his that's his supposed to be his natural habitat. But we think that's okay. So what is the next step to ban animals from zoos? I don't, you know, where, 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 where are we going next with all of this? So I, I say to us all today, I'm asking us all to reconsider 
um, what we're thinking, what we're getting ready to do to have an impact um, that will have an impact on our children, have an impact on our development. But more importantly, no one can say that uh, what circuses provide is no different than us training our own animals at home. So if you have a dog or a cat, you have to go through a training process to get your animal, your pet, to do what you need it to do. It's no different what they do in the circuses. And, I'll end with, and I will end with this. And I go back to the book of Genesis, verse 1, where the Lord said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and all of the creatures that move on the ground. Animals will always be, um, will always be guided by mankind because that's the way the Lord has ordained it. So how we, however we treat our animals is the way we treat our animals, but I think this piece of legislation is, is not fair, and I don't want to say it's hypocritical, but I think that, you know, I think it's an agenda, and I don't think it's something that improves the lives in, in, in the city of New York um, for our animals and or our children or those of us here. So that's what I wanted to put on the record, and I asked the committee to reconsider before we vote just to ban animals who are here just no different than they are whether they're in an aquarium or if they're in a Bronx Zoo or if they're a horse riding a police officer riding on a horse so I'm asking us all to really really consider before we think about voting this out and shutting down New York City to an experience that we've all appreciated when we were growing up thank you uh, thank you Councilmember King uh, I would ask the clerk to call the roll Willie Martin committee clerk roll call vote committee on health items are coupled chair Johnson I vote aye at all, and um, I would ask to be added as a co-sponsor of Councilmember Drum's proposed introduction, number 1263A. Mendez. I vote aye on all, and would also like to be added as a co-sponsor to propose intro number 1263A. Ku. I will eye on all, and I will do the same thing. As I want to be a co-sponsor of uh, 1263A. Thank you. Rebecca. I vote, I vote aye on all, and I'm already on 1263 because I saw the wonderful value of Danny's law. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote. Uh, A, I vote. I on on both and would like to be added to 1263 but I did just want to say uh, a word that uh, uh, the advocates here I met with and we had some uh, really good meetings and in fact we had a conference call I remember with some experts on this issue and it was very persuasive uh, so I want to congratulate all the advocates um, which is why I became a co-sponsor uh, of this bill and I also just want to say, with all due respect to uh, uh, our colleague who spoke a little bit earlier, as the Chair of Cultural Affairs, I think uh, uh, I want to offer a word of defense uh, for uh, the Wildlife Conservation uh, Society and some of our other cultural institutions, uh, which I think have a good record of, of caring for uh, animals, and, and uh, I think there is a distinction here. So I just want to uh, uh, say that on the record. And, uh, and say that while I too did go to a circus uh, as a child, uh, probably as a six or seven year old, I didn't have all the information uh, about what that experience meant, and not only for me, but for the animals that were performing. And uh, luckily now I have a bit more awareness about uh, that experience uh, for the animals. And that is why today uh, I'm proud to take this vote. So thank you very much. Espinel. Um, I vote aye on all. My vote of six in the affirmative. Uh, uh, Mr. Clerk, I want to call. I know we voted, but also my friend and colleague, uh, Councilmember Miller, is here, and I know he had a statement to make uh, before we close up this hearing. Uh, Councilmember Miller. Okay. Thank you, uh, Chair Johnson, and, and I want to thank my colleagues for allowing me a moment to speak today, and I respectfully I uh, want to talk about the, the legislation that was just voted on as relates to the, uh, the uh, exotic animals. But despite the best of intentions, I'm, I'm, I'm troubled because of its impact on, uh, not just because of, I think that there's uh, literally one game left in town and that is the Universal Soul Circus. This is an institution which is for the past 25 years 
has brought the circus and cultural institutions to uh, communities of color throughout not just the cities of New York, United States, but throughout the world. But it started right here. Um, had the opportunity to work with them over the past few years, uh, and I'm watching, in fact, this year, um, bringing nearly 4,000 sheltered families into the circus uh, three hours before the circus to watch them perform, to train, um, to, to, to feed them, and, and just the excitement and the joy on their faces was, it was absolutely immeasurable. The tens of thousands of school children that participate um, each year as well. But I think that the bigger picture is that we've gone down this road in industries in the very recent past, and uh, we did not um, choose or have the opportunity to legislate those industries that the impact on the financial impact on communities were taken into consideration. Um, and ultimately, that stimulated conversations that brought, the, brought us the opportunity to enhance the quality of life and, and, and more humane treatment for the, uh, in that case, uh, the uh, horse carriages. And so um, I will be, uh, during, when I have the opportunity, voting against it, and I would have uh, asked that my colleagues consider its impact on communities uh, in which this circus has come in. I did also have the opportunity to be at the Barclays Center and see the melancholy on the faces of families that uh, will not see the circus come back to New York City uh, at all. Uh, and, and so uh, there's certainly the impact, the long-term impact in the tradition. And listen, just because something is, has been here for a long time doesn't make it right, um, but I think that in this case that uh, knowing that there is but one circus in town, knowing that the, how those were treated, uh, animals were treated, um, I would uh, hope that it would be able to continue to provide service and the resources into the communities of color uh, and opportunities that they have bought. And uh, as I said, the council have considered that in the past in, in making or not making decisions. So I would have ask that they do the same here. Again, I, I, I am very respectful that you allow me the opportunity to speak today, and I thank you for your time, and, and certainly, Council Member, um, I thank you for your thoughtfulness on this, and you know that I am a uh, believe in, in, in animal rights, and uh, but I also believe that, uh, that when things are being done properly, that they should have an opportunity to continue, so thank you. Council Member Miller, your gentleman. Always a gentleman, and I know you and I had a conversation yesterday about how the circus that you're concerned about has had a pretty significant impact locally in supporting your community and a local park in your community and helping see that park be rehabilitated. So I understand that you have real concerns about this, and I'm glad that you came today uh, to express them. Um, but uh, I'm glad that we can talk about these things in a respectful manner. So we're going to hold the vote open uh, for uh, about uh, 10 minutes, but if the clerk would uh, please read the results. My vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Both items on today's agenda have been adopted by the committee. So these items have been, agended, uh, been, have been adopted and we voted on it the full stated. Uh, this vote will remain open for 10 minutes. Congratulations, Councilman Mendez. Congratulations, Councilman Drum. And congratulations to all the advocates.